Before we can start using NumPy, we need to install it and import it. The easiest way to install it is with pip. So pip install NumPy. Uh, but if you're on Google Colab like me, you'll need to do exclamation mark pip install NumPy, where this exclamation mark just tells Colab you're running a shell command. Although you don't even need to do that because uh, NumPy is already installed on Colab by default. So then to import NumPy, the convention is to import NumPy as np. All right, so we'll make our first array from a list of numbers. We'll say r equals np dot array, open parens, list, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, we can print the array. We can check its dimensionality and its shape. So in this case, we have a one dimensional array with a shape what I'll call five by. We can see how many elements it contains with len. So in this case, five. And if we wanted to make a two, two dimensional array, we can do that too from a list of lists like r2d equals np.array, open parens, and then I'll pass in a list of two nested sublists. So let's make this guy 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. And just like before, we can print the array, check its dimensionality and its shape. So in this case, we have a two dimensional array with shape two by five, two rows by five columns. And we can see how many elements it contains. Now, you might be surprised to see that R2D has two not 10 elements. That's because R2D can be interpreted as an array that contains two arrays inside of it. If you want to get the total number of nested elements in the array, you can use the dot size attribute like R2D dot size. And in this case, you get back probably what you expected 10. If you want to know what type of data is in the array, you might try using Python's type function like type R2D. Uh, but this just tells you that the object itself is an ND array. To see what type of data the array is actually storing, you need to use the dot dtype attribute. And in this case, you can see that R2D is storing 64-bit integers. Now, there are two basic rules for every NumPy array. Every element in the array must be of the same type and size. And if an array's elements are also arrays, those inner arrays must have the same type and number of elements as each other. In other words, multi-dimensional arrays must be rectangular and not jagged. So for example, I can make a 1D array of integers, and this is fine because every element in the array uh, is an integer. So for example, np.array, one, two, three, and like this checks out, no problems. Now, what if I try to make an array from a list that contains a mix of integers and strings? So np.array, open parens, one, hello, two. Okay. Now, in this case, NumPy does an error, but what it does is it casts the integers, and you can see that here, it casts the integers to strings in order to satisfy the property that every element is the same type. Now, you might also be wondering, hey, I thought you said you can't have an array of strings because strings are objects that vary in size, and the whole point of an array is to store fixed size objects. The caveat to what I said is that you can create an array of strings if you restrict the strings to a certain size. And that's what's going on here. The dtype uh, left caret u21, that stands for Unicode strings with 21 characters or less. So uh, if we take this array and let's say we set it as a variable foo, and we can print foo. So now let's say we try to reassign the first element of foo to a really, really, really long string. Now let's take a look at foo. So you can see um, our really, really, really long string actually gets truncated down to 21 characters. All right. so. What if we try to build an array from a list of lists where the first inner list has four integers and the second inner list has four floats, like np.array, open parens, 
list, and then we're gonna have two nested sub lists where this one has four integers, and this guy has four uh, floats. Okay, so once again, NumPy doesn't error, but what it does is it promotes these integers to floats, and that's to maintain that homogeneous data type. All right, so let's see one last example. What if we try to build an array from a list of lists where the first inner list has four integers and the second inner list has two integers? So I'll say np.array, open parens, list, and then this first nested sublist has uh, four integers and the second nested sublist only has two integers. Okay, so in this case, NumPy gives us a warning that says, creating an ND array from a ragged nested sequences is deprecated, but we actually do get back an array with D type object. Uh, now, this just means you have an array of pointers, which is more or less the same thing as a standard Python list.